You might think this armor would be the best armor for the Ashlands, but you would be wrong. In fact, I would recommend you use this armor, that weapon, as well as advise you to stockpile these resources ahead of this update. Stay tuned to find out why and hear my thoughts on what I think will be the key item for Ashlands progression that you should be stockpiling now. But first, a disclaimer, this video will likely contain Ashlands spoilers you have been warned. To effectively be prepared for the Ashlands, there are two prerequisites you must complete. First, it is recommended that you have completed the existing content highlighted by the defeat of the Mistlands boss, the Queen. The Queen currently drops the Queen Drop as the placeholder boss item. This item will surely be critical to enabling your progress into the Ashlands. For instance, prior to the Mistlands update, Yagluth dropped the Yagluth Thing, which would eventually become the Torn Spirit, enabling you to craft the Wisp Light. Without it, Mistlands progression would not have been possible. As a result, I expect when the update launches, this item will transform into something comparable to the Torn Spirit, permitting you to enter the Ashlands. For instance, perhaps a device that enables you to get a resource that will allow you to sustain the heat of the biome. Second, in addition to overcoming the Queen, it is important that you have crafted and fully upgraded both your Black Forge and Galder Table, such that you can craft the top tier weapons and armor in the game. That said, you may have noticed that unlike other workbenches in Valheim, the max quality level available for upgraded items is capped at 3. Unlike the workbenches before it, only two available equipment equipment upgrades are currently craftable for the Black Forge and Galder Table. It is expected that the Ashlands will provide a new resource, unlocking a recipe for workbench upgrades for both the Forge and Table that will allow you to upgrade your Mistlands gear to a quality of 4. Fortunately, we do know the resource quantities that will be required to bring each weapon and armor piece to level 4, and yes, I've compiled all the information for you. First, here's a breakdown of every melee weapon, armor piece, bow, crossbow, and staff that is currently capped at a quality level of 3 and the required resources to upgrade them. Second, here's the grand total of all items required to upgrade everything from quality level 3 to 4. I recommend having all these resources on hand so that you can fully upgrade all of them the second you find the final resource to upgrade your workbenches. Alternatively, if there is a certain weapon or armor you don't plan on using, you can forgo upgrading that item and save yourself some time gathering resources. However, you may want to hear my weapon and armor recommendations first before making that decision. Before those, it's important you also have the optimal foods and my recommended supporting meads to maximize your survival. First, meads, of which I recommend 5. Fire resistance barley, which will be critical as we can say with certainty there will be lava and flame in this biome and therefore the risk of catching fire will be high. Second and third of the lingering stamina and tasty meads, any veteran Valheim player will know that stamina is the lifeblood of any playthrough. Ensure these are on hand to quickly replenish your valuable stamina when in a pinch. Fourth, major healing meads for the obvious heal when pushed to your limit. And fifth, while I have no confirmed knowledge of any poison dealing creatures in the Ashlands, I would rather be safe than sorry and make sure I have a poison resistance mead in my inventory just in case. For food on the other hand, you'll need to assess three types based on your playstyle. Starting with the health foods, the best is the Mist Hair Supreme, followed by a three-way tie in the Honey Glazed Chicken, Meat Platter, and Serpent Stew. Second, Stamina foods in descending order with the fish and bread, mushroom omelette, and salad. Thirdly, if using a spell casting build, the three best Eitre foods are the Seeker Aspic, Yggdrasil Porridge, and Stuffed Mushroom. For a melee build, I personally like to lean into Stamina with the Mr. Supreme, Fish and Bread, and Mushroom Omelette. And for spell casting, go with the Seeker Aspic, Yggdrasil Porridge, and add some survivability with the Mr. Supreme. With our inventory of meads and full belly, it's time we turn our attention towards my recommended weapons and armor. But first, we must look at the anticipated creatures we will be fighting fully understand the rationale behind these recommendations. Iron Gate have teased many of the creatures we can anticipate in the Ashlands with the Morgan to the basic Witcher. If you have seen the images of the featured monsters, you will spot an obvious skeletal and undead theme across the board. This leads me to believe that both Blunt and Spirit will be king based on the bone and undead nature of the creatures. That said, the developers have stated they wanted combat to be more interesting than a simple rock, paper, scissors type combat. For instance, while a fire creature you would think would carry an obvious weakness to frost and resistance to fire, do not expect these resistances to be overwhelming, allowing for a variety of viable playstyles. Further, 
With the presence of so many skeletal creatures, I do anticipate fire damage to be viable, and similarly, with the likely presence of fire, frost damage may also have its place. Based on this, my first of two armor kit recommendations are as follows. Option one is the full Fenris armor, with the hood, coat, and leggings, providing you with the set bonus of fire resistance, in addition to the frost resistance from the coat, not to mention the huge speed boost. For me, when I first visit a new biome, I want to be quick such that I can traverse and discover the new terrain quickly and retreat effectively when needed. That said, I do offer two tweaks to this set for a more balanced approach. First, swap the Fenris hood with the Carapace helmet. The helmet provides a boost to your overall armor, but does not impact your movement speed greatly as helmets do not come with a movement speed reduction. Second, swap the Fenris coat with the root harness. As you may know, the harness is special in that it offers a unique buff in Pierce resistance. Distance. The Ashlands will undoubtedly have pierce damage, especially from these charred archers, and this chess piece will no doubt increase your survivability. That said, it does make you weak to fire, so I suggest countering that with the barley wine mead we discussed earlier. Pair this armor with the best cape in the game, the feather cape, and of course the carapace buckler. This buckler is the best buckler in the game, and personally, I prefer bucklers over round or tower shields for that sweet 2.5 times parry bonus. Option two for the spellcasters out there is to go with the full Eiter Weave robe set with the hood, robe, and trousers. The Eiter regeneration when fully equipped with this gear is unmatched and will have you spitting spells. <laughs> like Voldemort hunting Horcruxes. Like option one, I do offer some alternatives for consideration. First, consider again swapping the hood with the Carapace helmet for additional armor. Second, you could also swap the robe with the Fenris coat for increased movement speed plus frost resistance. And as always, the feather cape is still king here. For weapons, again, I have two sets of options. If going with armor option one, I recommend the Mist Walker complemented with the Spine Snap Bow with Silver Arrows. As mentioned previously, Undead is a common theme and I anticipate Spirit Damage will be super effective. The Mist Walker in particular is one of the most well-rounded weapons dealing three types of damage, Slash, Frost, and Spirit. While I normally would prefer the Draugr Fang or Huntsman over the Spine, in this case, I think the added Spirit Damage from the bow will be a game changer, especially when sailing to the Ashlands and encountering a Bone Serpent. Other options like the Silver Sword could excel should you want to lean further further into spirit damage. Or the Frostner could also be viable, leaning into blunt damage for those skeletal foes while also providing spirit and frost. Also, I do recommend you have with you fire, carapace, and frost arrows. Frost and fire will allow you to have some flexibility with elemental damage, and carapace will be useful with the highest flat damage of any of the arrows. Alternatively, if you choose option 2 in the Eiter Weave, you can't go wrong with the Staff of Embers. You might think that a fire dealing weapon in a lava filled biome may be counterintuitive, but you must remember Remember that this staff also does a ton of blunt damage, effectively countering skeletal enemies. All that said, my preferred mage playstyle is to use all staffs simultaneously. I encourage you to summon skeletons with the dead razor, protect yourself with a bubble from the staff of protection, and alternate your damage with the staff of embers and frost for a heck of a good time. Before we reveal this key item for Ashland's progression, first remember to have the best forsaken power equipped. You cannot go wrong with either Bone Masses or Yagloose for the physical and elemental damage resistances respectively. However, if going for a mage build, you may consider the Queens. All that said, despite the optimal weapons and armor, that alone won't be sufficient for you to conquer the Ashlands as Iron Gate has teased they will be adding fortresses to Valheim. As you can expect, these gates cannot be penetrated with a sword, but will require something a little more robust. For this reason, I believe Mechanical Springs will be the most important item for Ashlands progression, and you should be hoarding these now. Mechanical Springs are crafted at the Artisan Table with refined Eiter and Iron, but offer few use cases aside from the Vice Trap Ballista. While the Vice is critical, I've rarely built traps or ballistas. That said, I think the ballista provides an obvious hint at the spring's application in the Ashlands with the ballista's bolt propulsion. As part of the T's fortress time, Iron Gate have teased both catapults, battering rams, and this mysterious obliterator-like device that will be used to conquer the Ashlands dungeon. I fully expect the spring to be a critical component of these devices, and for that reason, it's important you have them at the ready to accelerate your crusade of the Ashlands fortresses and reap their abundant rewards. And if you want to know more about the upcoming Ashlands, check out this video covering everything we currently know about Valheim's seventh biome coming later in 2024.